Saturday in the bustling town of Ixmiquilpan, two hours north of Mexico City. People have come to shop, to sell at the market, and to get their money. In 2007, according to the Bank of Mexico, $24 billion flowed into the country from Mexicans working abroad, mostly in the United States. That money has a big impact. It wasn't always this way. People in the surrounding Indian villages have been living in much the same way for centuries. Traditional houses were made of sticks and food was cooked over an open fire. But things changed when young people began making the journey north to work in the United States. Money sent from the U.S. helped build everything from American-style houses to new roads and town halls. For many here, having a family member in the U.S. can make all the difference in the world. I believe that it was a miracle of God that she went. 45-year-old Maria Felix Garcia lives with her four children and extended family in the nearby village of San Nicolas. When she needed surgery on her eyes, she paid the doctor using money her oldest daughter had earned working at a restaurant in Atlanta. We work in the fields and all we have is the money we get from corn and chilies. Although she is blind in one eye, Maria still embroiders blouses in the traditional Indian style to sell at the market. It can take her up to one month to finish just one shirt. Her husband earns about $8 a day as a farm laborer. Thanks to her daughter in America, the younger children get an education. We've talked about my daughter coming back, but she says she needs to keep working so the children can go to school. But now times are tough in America, which means times are also more difficult for Maria's daughter who has stopped sending money home. We heard stories similar to Maria's all over the valley. The Bank of Mexico says remittance money fell by 12% in August, but some villages have been hit much harder. When we go to a village, we see more inactivity than we've ever seen before. So it would seem like in that village it might be 20, 30, 40, 50, more percent. Dan Lund is a public policy researcher in Mexico City. It makes a very poor society, even poorer. The impact of fewer dollars flowing south will extend far beyond villages like these. A recent study by the Inter-American Development Bank found that if that trend continues, more than two million families in Latin America will be pushed below the poverty level, most of them here in Mexico. Hilario Blanco has seen the economic story, good times and the bad times from both sides of the border. He spent 15 years working in the United States, the last seven on a construction crew in Florida. But he recently returned to his village because he missed his family and he had trouble finding full-time work. The work went down, so I decided to come back. I could only find work for 20, maybe 25 hours a week. You drew, drew your own plans for this. Five years ago, Ilario laid the foundation for his dream home. He paid for the materials with money he earned building houses in America. The hand-drawn floor plan was based on a home he worked on in Florida. Here's the entrance near the kitchen. Hilario's plans show a home with two floors and four bedrooms. But since work in America has dried up, he acknowledges his dreams may have to wait. Is he certain that he will be able to finish? It's my wish. It's what I really want. For now, Hilario is determined to keep going. But others have given up building completely, waiting for better times. More than 40% of the Mexican population already lives in poverty. The downturn in the U.S. economy will make tough times in villages like these even tougher. People's lives will change. Some education won't take place, and the consequences of that will be felt in Mexico directly and then indirectly throughout the North American community. A poorer Mexico impacts the U.S. and Canada. Those left behind can only wait and hope for better days ahead.